You can tell you're a mountain bike YouTuber when you use the phrase, the tire is the only real contact with the ground. But hell, I'm here now, so I may as well get into it. Today, I wanna to do a quick rundown of tire treads and explaining the difference going from something like this, which I would say is a true cross country tire, all the way to something far more aggressive, like a mud spike. So let's get into it. When talking about tire treads, even on something as shallow as this cross country tire, I want you to think about something like a football boot or a soccer cleat, I guess you'd call it over here. Now, a cleat or a boot with studs is gonna be really good at penetrating soft dirt, but not so good at walking over concrete because it's quite simply a smoother surface that doesn't rely on that penetration to get grip. This cross country tire in that instance would be more like a running shoe. It's got a lot shorter stack height on the knobs. Now, basically as a general rule of thumb, the shorter the knobs, the faster the tire will roll, but it comes with a cost. It will also be significantly worse at braking. To try and recoup some of that traction lost, the tire actually has far more knobs. If you look how many there are, they just proliferate the whole tread and they try and be really specific with what they're trying to do. You might even see, for instance, on this tire, the leading edge is actually stepped to try and take away any resistance under acceleration, but they have a nice flat backside to try and give as much braking as possible. I know it sounds daft, but for a lot of us that aren't riding really loose, aggressive trails, a cross country tire can actually provide loads of grip. That's because these shorter knobs squirm less, whilst also there are so many of them that they can sometimes, sometimes take to the shape of the trail better. A halfway house might be something like this trail tire. Now, as you can see, although similar weights, this sort of down country or trail tire has a lot taller stack height, but it's got a lot of the same features. For instance, those center knobs still have like a raised stepped profile to hopefully aid rolling resistance. So what you're gonna see on something like this trail tire is yes, shorter stack heights, but a lot of the tech borrowed from more aggressive tires. Most notably, the introduction of something like this transfer knob. What that's there to do is not only give a more consistent feeling as we go from edge to edge, but also act as a really big braking paddle. This can have a really large effect on how well this tire hooks up under braking, but the better it is at braking, the slower it's gonna roll. So they have to be quite specific in that. You might also see that comparatively, these edge knobs are taller than these center knobs. And that's because they want something that's gonna penetrate when leaning, but not gonna slow the tire down too much under rolling resistance. Again, when the trails aren't too loose, these can actually offer a surprisingly large amount of grip. Now, how could I talk about mountain bike tires without talking about the Maxxis Minion family? So you have the DHF. Now, although when we talk about leaning a bike, we talk as if only the edge knobs of the tire are in contact, but obviously that's just not true. And one of the things that made this tire so popular, and let's face it, so uh, ready to be copied by other players in the industry, is how this tire grips, especially when on the front, when leaning the bike. And that's because the role of the scent knobs and how they support cornering. So if you think about it, a tire that has a longer knob in terms of along the tire will give a greater edge when leaning. Conversely, a knob that is wider across the width of the tire will do a superior job when braking. The DHF proved so popular because of how good it was when leaning and how hard those center knobs can work. It's all about having as many edges as possible to hook up into the dirt. Conversely, the DHR, which was suited more onto the rear, has far greater braking traction because of that paddle. Both have the same edge knobs, which have an L shape. That is again to improve braking as well as maybe a bit of consistency as you go from edge to edge but it's surprising how much difference that braking paddle can really, really make. The DHR, again, which is widely copied, sheds pretty well in the mud, and that's because it's got a slightly more open tread pattern. And that brings me on to my next point, the almighty Asagai. The Asagai, in some ways, is a hybrid of the DHR and the DHF. And again, has been quite 
widely copied. Although you could argue that it took a lot of its thinking away from the Magic Mary. It really was one of the first aggressive tyres to have that transfer knob. Now what that does is it gives a more consistent feeling when transferring between the centre and the edge knobs because there isn't that gap that you've got to fall onto your edges, so to speak. It also does really well under braking. And that transfer knob is becoming more and more common with different brands in the industry. That's because if you look across the tire here, it actually provides a really consistent braking surface. The knobs are tall, it's quite a draggy style of tire, but it does a really good job for extreme or more aggressive applications. And last but not least, we're gonna talk about the mud spike. Now, the mud spike is an interesting tire because yes, it's very good in mud, but when it's really, really dusty, it can do a great job on exceptionally dry blown out trails. And that's because these knobs are all about penetrating and hooking up into loose dirt. It does have a lot more canvas on show. So I want you to imagine, yes, great when you're going down just pure thick mud and you want something to hook in there, but if you think of all the ways a route could traverse hitting nothing but canvas, it means that it can be a bit more wishy-washy. Similarly, under high load, these knobs, which are great because they're so tall, can come back to bite you as they squirm and twist as you drive the bike through turns. So on hard trails, it can begin, if we go back to the football boot, start to feel like you're walking on studs as opposed to having something that's really penetrating the dirt. You can also see lots of indentations and marks on this tire. That's there solely to shed mud. The idea being that instead of it being able to stick to a smooth surface, it's got more edges to conform to, so it has a harder job at staying put. Now, that is a very, very, very quick guide into mountain biking tire treads. We'll have to do a greater breakdown at some point where we talk about lots of other elements, such as sidewall and weight and how to make a tire immune to all kinds of damage, which might just save your rim. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.